All right. Welcome to our fourth grade English class. I am so happy to have everyone here this morning. We're going to go ahead and um, I know that we all read that robot story. And before we go back to the robot story, I thought that we would do a fun creative writing um, little exercise first so that we can keep our brains fresh and thinking of some new fun ideas. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my story starter this morning and or this afternoon. And um, Alyssa, do you want to go ahead and unmute yourself and pick a story uh, if you want adventure, fantasy, sci-fi, or scrambler? Let's see if she's there. Alyssa, are you there? Alyssa? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go to Jack. Jack, can you pick one of these for us? Um, uh, scrambler. Yeah, do you want to pick an adventure, fantasy, sci-fi? Oh, scrambler. Okay, let's do scrambler. All right, and then we'll do an easy, well, let's see, this is fourth grade, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and type in fourth grade. Okay, so Jack, do you want to read what we are going to write a sentence or two about? Write a myth about a chivalrous? chivalrous spider monkey who tries to get into the genus book of world records. All right, so Jack, do you know what chivalrous means? No. Chivalrous means very courteous. So if you've ever heard of a knight or a king, they would all have chivalry, right? Someone, um, a modern chivalrous person would open the door for someone, would hold the elevator doors open, right? Someone that has really good manners. Um, that's what chivalrous means. So we have a spider monkey that has really good manners, and he's trying to get into the Guinness Book of World Records. Jack, what's the Guinness Book of World Records? It's a book of um, world records that people um, have done. It's all, it's all in this giant book, and the, if you have one, you can like look in it and see. Yeah, exactly. You're so right. Was. Exactly. Okay, so on our warm-up, right at least two sentences in the chat box about chivalrous or polite. All right, so typing in to your video, into your chat, everyone is typing at, at least two sentences about a chivalrous spider monkey who tries to get in to the Guinness Book of World Records. And then I will be, if you want to write it out on a piece of paper and share it, that's okay. If you would like to type it in, that's also okay. As long as I have everyone participating, that is all that I ask of you. And when you're done, if you would like to raise your hand or you can also, um, push the little button that will show me you have your hand raised, which is also a really good way for me to see if you would like to share. Let's 
So it looks like I have some friends that are diligently typing. Kyle, I don't see you typing. Karina, I see you working. Lily's working hard. Looks like Delilah's working hard. Karina, thank you. Lily's working hard. Just gonna give you guys a couple more minutes to finish. All right, so Kyle, can you read what you wrote? Where's Kyle? If you, you need to unmute yourself, Kyle. One day, Spider Monkey tried to break the world record for the best toy drive. Awesome. And then when we're writing, I know this is creative writing, um, and sometimes it's different writing on the computer than it is on a regular piece of paper. But remember to always start your sentence with a what? Capital. Yes. And end it with? A period. Yes. Period, oh, question mark. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and go to Lily. There once was a spider monkey named Tom who is very trivialist. Then, one day, um, he heard that there was a thing called the Guinness Book, um, Guinness Book of World Records. So when he heard about it, then he tried to get in the Guinness Book. So he made the biggest rubber band ball, and he got into the Guinness World Records. And Great, that was a really good story. I like how you got into it with the giant rubber band ball. That was very creative of you. I'm gonna go ahead and ask Alyssa. Oh wait, Alyssa, you have to unmute yourself. Uh oh. Alyssa? All right, there it goes. One day there, uh, there was a monkey who, who tried Did 
Do you want us to come back to you? Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to get a few more volunteers. Let's see. Can I please get Kaden? Is your microphone working now? No. Try pressing the volume button on it. It might be on mute. Okay, I'm gonna ask Allie, can you share what you've written? I'm still writing it. Okay. I'm gonna go to Jack. Um, I wrote, um, one day Spider Monkey wanted to break a record. He wanted to close the elevator door as long as <laughs> that was cute because he's chivalrous. Good job. All right, I'm going to go to Karina. Spider Monkey wanted to break the world record. He wanted to eat 1,000 bananas in an hour. <laughs> That's so funny. I love it. Good job. And Sienna, what did you write? Once there lived a chivalrous spider monkey named Toto. Toto wanted to get into the Guinness Book of World Records. Toto's mom told him to climb up Mount Banana, so he did. And one week later, he broke a record of climbing with 50 pounds on his back. Toto got accepted in the Book of Records. Awesome. Good job. Thank you. So for my friends that are still figuring out how to get their microphones working, it's really important that you um, type in the chat box so that I know that you're participating. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to Alyssa and then we're going to work on something else. Okay. One day there was a monkey who wanted to break the record and go in, uh, and go into the book. So he uh, so he went on top of a building and uh, jumped down. But then when he jumped down, he fell on uh, on top of someone. So he didn't get uh, into the book. So then he tried again, and he didn't fall on someone that time. But they still didn't let him in the book because that wasn't something in it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Very very creative. Nice. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and watch a video that goes along with our robot. Oh, Trinity, I am so sorry. Can you read what you wrote, Trinity? Sure. Um, once upon a time, there was a little spider monkey who wanted to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. So he found the biggest and amazing banana in the world. And he and it took his whole life to eat it and eat it the end good job all right awesome perfect make sure to remember your periods at the end delilah would you like me to read it or would you like to read it you okay Delilah wrote, once there was a spider monkey named Jones. He was a really polite spider monkey. Jones wanted to get into the Guinness Book of World Records because he was a really fast typer and he wanted to be the fastest typer in the world in the book. Jones was typing, typing, and typing to break the record of the fastest typing. He had to beat Maya, the world's fastest typer. She could type a 10 page book in one minute. So Joan kept typing and typing. One day, Maya was in a show and she said she, can type, she can't type anymore. Joan's got a text on his banana phone and it said that he is now the fastest typer in the world. Every day, everyone says good job to him whenever he goes outside. 
That was a great, great story. Wow, I can't believe you must be one of the fastest typers in the world because you were able to type that so fast. Great job. You must practice. Do you practice at home, Delilah? No. No? How do you type so fast? I don't know. <laughs> practice. Good job. Okay, raising your hand, is there anyone else that would like to share their story with the class? I want to make sure that everyone gets a chance. Caden, since I can't hear you, I would really like for you to type it in so that I know you're participating with us. Um, and I think everyone else either raised their hand and told me the story or typed it. So Caden, I really need you to go ahead and do that for us. Thank you. Um, we're going to go ahead and go back to our robot story. And we have a little video that goes along with it. So. Just loading really quickly. All right, so this video is um, the author of our robot story. Her name is Marlene Kennedy, and she's going to sort of tell us about the characters. Oh, wait. tell my young authors that when you have a main character you have to give them some problems you have to be a real troublemaker and sometimes you have to do things that are kind of mean to your character um, you have to get have something that will get in their way something that will make give them a rough time if you have a story where everything is perfect the whole way through it's not interesting and it doesn't give the, the reader um, the encouragement to keep on turning pages. Some days I'll get in front of the computer and I'll start typing away and the words will just flow. But there are other days where I don't even want to sit down and write. I'd rather go watch TV, I'd rather go take a walk or I'd rather play with my dog, Ralphie. Ralphie is a lot of fun to play with. You wanna see? Hey, Ralphie. Do you wanna play fetch? Oh, do you wanna play fetch? All right. Go get it, Ralphie. Go get it. Good boy, all right, sit down. Hey, Ralphie. Good boy, Ralphie. Sometimes even if I'm not in the mood to write, once I start in typing, um, all of a sudden, usually it does become fun. It's like a movie's playing in my head. But all in all, I would say that for me, being an author is the best job in the world. Alrighty. So, thank you all for listening to that story. And I'm going to go ahead and see. All righty. So now what I would like us to do as a class is if, oh, let's see, it looks like Michaela, if you want to unmute yourself and share about your spider monkey real quick. Where is Michaela? Wait, Michaela, you have to start over. I can't look at, uh, can I do it from where I wrote it? Because when I'm yeah. looking at yours, it's all blurry. Yeah, of course. There once was a spider monkey who, oh, I forgot to put That's who. That's okay. 
was so polite, and she wanted to get into the book of world records. So then she went to the furthest banana jungle. She discovered the banana puppy. It was shaped. It was a banana shaped like a puppy, and it was, it was real. It was like a real puppy. I forgot to write that. <laughs> okay. And they put her in the Genesis Book of World Records. Oh, good job. Awesome. Thank you for participating. Um, Kyle, did you ever, oh no, Kyle already participated. Kaden, I'm still waiting for you to type into the box your answer or get your video sound working so I know you're there. All right, so for the next part, um, Lily, can you unmute yourself and read the watch the interview um, right here for us? Yeah. Okay. Watch the interview with the author of Clean Start, Marlon, Marlon Kennedy, below. Then write a short story using your robot as your main character. You can also use the robot from the story. Keep in mind what Marlon says about making things hard for your characters. So what problem will you give your robot? Good job. Okay, so you guys did such a fabulous job coming up with robots in our last class. So what I would like you guys to do is use the robot that you came up with in last class. Um, and Lily, what was the name of your robot again? I forget. My robot was Lucy. Lucy. Okay, so you're going to use Lucy as your robot. And what we want to know is what, what obstacles is our robot going to face? And I kind of want to just bring up um, you know, the, the robot in our story that we read, he didn't like cleaning houses, right? That just wasn't his thing, but he did like playing chess, which helped the old man. So what, what problems do you think your robot might face? If your robot is really good at, um, doing homework, then maybe your robot is really bad at cheating on tests, or I don't know. So try and think of some obstacles. Let's see what it says. So let's go ahead. So we're going to have you guys write a little short story, so two to three sentences about your character, okay? About your robot. So just, um, I'll get you guys started. Um, raise your hand if you have any questions or need help or maybe need some ideas. Um, so some possible, whoops. Sorts of one that's wrong. Possible dilemmas. Anyone else give me some ideas? Or I see everyone's kind of writing. So I'm sure you guys can come up with some ideas.
All right, so I would like to have Caden share his, and then Caden, if you could also add at least one more sentence to the rest of your dilemma, how would that be a problem? Maybe if you had a school soccer game and the school was depending on him, how did that affect him? And then Jack, do you wanna read yours to the class? Okay, um, Bobby Joe is really good at everything that involves sports. He is also really good at doing my chores. He is really bad at talking clear. Okay, so add a sentence to that and say how that would be a problem for him in general. But thank you so much, Kaden and Jack, for participating. Extra participation points. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and it looks like everyone is diligently working. I'm gonna give you guys a couple more minutes. All right, I would like, Jack, can you uh, add, can you read what you added to your story? Well, I added, that would be a problem because sometimes people would not know what he is saying. They would, they would not know if he says his battery is low. Oh, so if he doesn't, if they don't understand him communicating and he has batteries running low, then he could just stop working and then he wouldn't be able to do anything. So that's a really that's a really good dilemma to think of. I really like that. It's very creative. Sienna, can you unmute yourself and please share with the class what you have? I have a robot Bob is great at doing homework. He is also bad at not talking mean to people he doesn't know. Oh, okay. So, um, how would that be a dilemma? <laughs> like, if a postman stops by, mm -hmm. and he's supposed to pick it up, and he sees the postman, he might not be very nice. Oh. And then, the okay. postman won't like him. Okay, so that would kind of get him into a tricky situation, huh? Great, thank you for sharing. Uh, maybe if you can add that to the end so that you can kind of give an anecdote, right? You're giving an, act an actual um, example. That would be wonderful. Yeah. All right, Ali, are you ready to share? No. Are you typing? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. We have Kyle, I haven't heard from you in a while. Kyle, do you wanna share what you've written so far? 
you we were lagging so much I can't hear a thing anyone is saying. Oh no. I can hear you okay. Okay. What were you writing about though? We're writing about so remember the last story we read about a robot? Yeah. So this time we're we're gonna take the robot that you created in the last class. And you're gonna write a little short story using your robot as the main character. And oh, mm-hmm. um, yeah, and what you wanna remember is that in stories, they're really boring unless your main character faces some type of challenge or, or problem. So mm-hmm. um, everyone's coming up with, is one of the robots can't speak clearly, which creates a problem because he can't communicate when his battery is about to die. And then we had another one that is really good at um, playing sports, but horrible at playing soccer. So when he's asked to go onto the field and play, it creates a problem for his classmates. So just think of a problem that your your robot might face. Oh, well, um, one day my robot, um, his name was Frozen Cinnamon, and he was making ice cream for the little kids. Mm -hmm. And... What he did was these mean kids came up and they grabbed one ice cream and threw it at him and it melted all over his circuits and then he had to go get the circuits repaired, which took a long, long time. Oh, and no. Okay. So, well, do you want to write it out on the, on the little group chat? Okay. Let's okay. see. All right. Thank you. All right. Do I have any volunteers to go ahead and share their wonderful stories with the class. Almost finished, so. Okay, um, take your time. Yeah, yeah. Later, in a second. Take your time. Karina. My robot, Nicole, is a fairy being in the attic, bad at making slime, and doesn't know how to swim. Nicole is good at baking, killing pets, and cleaning, and talking taking care of my pet. It will be bad that Nicole is afraid of being in the attic because she has to clean the attic every day. Good job. Great writing. I love that story. Ooh, let's see. My fastest, oh, Allie. Great. Allie, can you um, read what you've written? Or do you want me to read it for you? Um, uh, you read it for me. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a chivalrous spider monkey who was named Chris, and he had a friend who was a king, and his name was Andrew. He was very tough, and um, what does that say? Obsessed? Oh, obsessed to get into the Guinness book of world records so he could know if he was the best if he was not then he would do anything to be the best but he already tried to get it and he got caught the next day he asked chris the monkey to get it for him and he said yes but andrew actually tricked chris into doing it and chris is a favorite person of one of the guards. So that's why Andrew asked Chris. So the next day, Chris went to where the guards hid the book and he got it and came back. And on the way back, he noticed what he just stole and he went back and returned it. When Chris got back, he was really mad at Andrew. And Andrew was uh, asked, where is the book? And Chris said, I didn't get it because I don't steal. Andrew said, well, then I guess I have to put you in the dragon. Chris said, no. Oh, dungeon. I'll get it. Off went Chris to get the book. The end. Good job. That was a lot of writing. Awesome. Sienna, do you want to read yours? Sienna? Can you read it for me? Ab is good at doing homework and bad at not talking to people mainly. So if he sees a postman, he will get his family in trouble. Okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and ask Lily, can you unmute yourself and share what you wrote? Okay. Lucy is a robot that Lily made, and Lily needs help with her homework. So she, Lily goes and gets Lucy. Then Lucy ends up doing, um, well, then Lily ask, asks Lucy to help her with her homework. Then Lucy ends up doing all of Lily's homework. Um, after that, Lucy looked at Lily. Lily was getting sad because she um, was an only, ch um, wait, Lily was getting sad because she um, made Lily, Lucy do her homework. So Lily came back and said, um, can I do, I'm sorry that I made you do my homework. May I do it now? Then Lucy noticed that Lily was a nice girl. Lily always um, looked so sad when she was playing. That was because she had no sisters and no brothers. So Lily, uh, Lucy went over to Lily when she was done with her homework. Then Lucy went over to say to Lily and said, do you want to play with me? Lily said, yes, I would. So Lily and Lucy played together. The end. Yay! Awesome job. Great writing. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so we have a couple more minutes. So if I could get um, a few more of you to volunteer. Can I get Alyssa? Can I get you to share your story with us? No? All right, let's see. I put my story in the chat. Oh, you did? Okay, let's check it out. Kyle, all right, do you wanna read it out loud? Um, good job. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Michaela and then, Michaela. Um, my robot, my robot, my robot's name is Riley. She is really good at making arts and crafts, but when she gets too close to the hot glue gun, her circuits get fried. Oh no. Well, hopefully she doesn't get close to a hot glue gun. It is it isn't good it isn't good because when making crafts, you use a hot glue gun. Yeah. Good. Great job. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and go to Alyssa. Do you have something that you could share with us? I'm not sure why. Oh, there we go. I'm going to go to um, Trinity. Can you share what you've written? About my robot? Yeah. Um, my robot's name is, what is it? sorry. <laughs> my robot's name is Ash, and he's very good at doing work, but not so good at really writing. So he usually tells you what to do, but then also makes it like for you to do it too for your homework. Oh. Okay, very interesting. I like that. Good job. Thank you for participating and sharing. I'm going to go ahead and see if my friend Penny, I have not heard from you, um, if you would like to share what you have written. I don't know how to unmute you. What time is class over? Um, pretty much in a couple of minutes. Is that Kyle? Kyle, can you read your story before we um, go home? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> One day, frozen cinnamon was making ice cream for the little kids. 
And the mean kids came up and threw ice cream on him. And it fried his circuits, and he had to get repaired. And the repair took away his voice. And the only way to get his voice box back was to buy a new one. So he had to save up lots of money by selling ice cream to little kids. Then one day, the robot, the robot bought a new voice bought a new voice box. Three years later, he was three years later. He was so ecstatic, he jumped for joy. Awesome. Great job, Kyle. Just remember that I know when you're typing really quickly, it's easy not to put in our punctuation, but um, it makes it really hard for someone to read. I mean, you know how to read it because it's your story, but if I were reading it, um, having the, the periods and commas would really make it a lot easier to read. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go, thank you, but thank you so much for sharing, Kyle. I'm going to go to Alyssa. Okay. Uh, there's a girl, um, there's a girl named Summer who lived in a small house in between two buildings. She was a little girl, but, um, but was horrible at makeup. So one day she created a robot who did makeup and, uh, no, uh, polish perfect. There was a mirror connected to the desk and hooks on the mirror and an earring holder connected to uh, the desk and a, ch um, and a chair connected. So wherever you want to go, it took you there. When she uh, went to her parents with her robot uh, and got breakfast, when she was sitting at the table, her dad said, uh, Summer, I'm so proud of you. You um, you should have someone come over and uh, have their makeup be done by the bar. Then that got her. Uh, then that got her thinking. What if some uh, someone famous came over, uh, and uh, and the robot would do their uh, makeup? The next thing she knew, she was on the phone uh, with a famous person, uh, though she didn't know who it was. When um, when she came to get her makeup done, she asked Summer how the robot worked. And Summer said, it's easy. You just ask it to do whatever you want it to do, and it'll do it for you. But then the robot got a little uh, function, because at because uh, when she was getting breakfast, she spilled a little bit of juice on it. So then the robot did uh, the makeup horrible. Uh, it was like lipstick all over her cheeks, mm -hmm. and I sh um and eyeshadow all over her face. So um, Summer tried to fix it herself, and she turned, and it turned out she was pretty good. Then, yay! That was a great story. I love that. And on that note, um, we are done with our English for the day. I just wanted to give a special thank you to all of my friends who have participated in our activities, and I look forward to seeing all of your beautiful, bright, and smiling faces tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.